welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we're performing a fundamental stock analysis of Ontario Resources Corporation, ticker symbol AR. We're looking at Ontario today as a subscriber request and because their stock is one of the top performers in the market over the last year. So with that in mind, we're looking at their fundamentals today to find out what are we missing? What could the market have possibly discovered about this business this past year that led to this performance? So right now, Ontario is trading for $31.84 per share. Over the last year, they're up nearly 120%, so their stock price has more than doubled. In the last five years, even with this huge trough throughout 2019, 2020, and 2021, the company is up more than 30 times from their March of 2020 lows. Going back to when Ontario became a publicly listed business, their stock price is still down 37% in total though. Right now, Ontario is trading $17 below their 52-week high. They're about $17 above their 52-week low as well, so they're right in the middle. About 7% of their shares outstanding are currently sold short, and they have about a $10 billion market cap. So for additional background about the business, Ontario Resources, based in Denver, engages in the exploration for and production of natural gas and natural gas liquids in the United States and Canada. At the end of 2021, the company reported proven reserves of 17.7 trillion cubic feet of natural gas equivalent. Production averaged approximately 3,268,000,000 cubic feet of equivalent a day in 2021 at a rate of 31% liquids and 69% natural gas. Ontario Resources Corporation was founded in 2002 and is headquartered in Denver, Colorado. So for our fundamental analysis today, we are performing the Select 6 analysis, taking a checklist style approach of six standard financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of Ontario based off of their business fundamentals. So this analysis is still a work in progress and it's an opportunity to learn in public, so it will continue to improve and get better over time. With that said, let's get right into today's analysis. In just a minute, we'll talk about Ontario's financials, but first we have to address something. What are some of the qualitative aspects about this business? Looking at some of the main points around a potential long thesis for the company, one, the firm's equity investment in Ontario Midstream is a liquid asset that could be sold in a pinch to generate liquidity. Two, the firm's liquids-rich drilling inventory will enable it to outperform peers if natural gas liquid prices remain constructive as are expected. And then three, Ontario's midstream contracts give it priority access to liquid natural gas export markets, enabling it to benefit from soaring overseas demand for U.S. natural gas. Then for some of the key points around a potential short thesis of the business, one, Ontario has a shorter runway of drilling opportunities than many of its peers and could run out of top tier acreage sooner. Two, Ontario's margins are weakened by above average unit costs, especially in the next couple of years as it faces elevated marketing costs. And three, Ontario's hedge position dwindled in late 2021 and it's exposed to swings in natural gas liquid pricing in 2022. Hopefully this offers a potentially balanced perspective around some of the key points of both a long and a short thesis for the business. Now let's get into their financials. So starting off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the last five years to be above 14%. So Ontario has not earned very high returns on capital at all over this period. They only produced positive returns on capital in three of their last five fiscal years. In 2019 and 2020, they had negative returns on capital. So they had negative returns on capital even coming into the COVID-19 pandemic. One bright spot for the business is that over their last 12 months, they've earned 25% returns on capital, so far outpacing what they've done in any of these other previous years. Even still, over their last five fiscal years, they're actually averaging negative returns on capital. And so this is an X on metric number one. The reason we were looking for a 14% benchmark is because over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns, and these business returns are captured by return on capital. And secondly, because the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. So that 14% mark could potentially build in some margin of safety based off the overall quality of the business, being about twice as good as average. In the case of Ontario as a commodity producer, it's not surprising that their return on capital results are going to be cyclical and to a great deal depend on the price of natural gas. So again, this is an X to start things off on metric number one. Next up for metric number two, here we're taking a high level overview of the growth of their business. So we're looking for revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth over the last five years. And this metric is all or nothing in nature. Either all three of these are going to be up for this to be a check, or if even one of them is down, this entire metric will be an X. We'll also be including their last 12 months worth of numbers in our calculations here. 
So over this time, Ontario has almost tripled their revenues. They've gone from about $3 billion in 2017 to more than $9 billion over their last 12 months. Their earnings are also up more than tripled. They've earned more than $1.8 billion in their last 12 months. And their free cash flows have swung from being negative for four out of these five years to now they are positive in 2021 and over their last 12 months as well. So all three of these are up. This is strong growth for Ontario as a business. And this is our first check today coming in on metric number two. Next up for metric number three, here we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in the business by looking at Ontario on a per share basis. So we're looking for earnings per share growth over the last five years. So over this time, their earnings more than tripled. Also worth mentioning is that Ontario has slightly diluted existing shareholders. They've only issued about 4% additional shares over this time, which is likely good because they were trading at very depressed valuations. And so if you had been a shareholder throughout this period, it's good that your ownership stake in the business has not been excessively diluted away, especially given the rocky financial position of the business. So with just small dilution and very strong earnings growth, this is going to be another check here on metric number three, as including their last 12 months, they've grown their earnings per share pretty significantly. Then metric number four is going to be very similar. Here we're looking for five-year free cash flow per share growth. Again, Ontario had negative free cash flows in four of these five years. They had positive free cash flows in 2021. And over their last 12 months, they produced $6.83 worth of free cash flows, meaning that this is another check here on metric number four. This is our third check in a row. And through our first four metrics, we have three checks and only one X. Then next up for metric number five, here we're evaluating how the business is utilizing leverage. So we don't want to be investing in overly levered businesses because during economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are at the greatest potential risk. We want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments to be below the amount of free cash flow that they produced over the last five years. Ontario has had quite a bit of debt, which is not uncommon for a lot of these natural gas companies. So again, they only had positive free cash flows in 2021, and they ended 2021 with about $5.5 billion worth of net debt. Since then, they've been paying this down, and currently they have about $4.7 billion worth of net debt. Over their last five fiscal years, they've only produced $150 million worth of free cash flow, so that is not enough to support this debt load. However, things are looking up for the business more recently. Over their last 12 months, they produced more than $2 billion worth of free cash flow. So if they're able to maintain these higher levels of free cash flow going forward, then it looks like their debt usage would be reasonable if they're really able to truly turn a corner for the business. But if they regress and get back to where they had been historically averaged out, their debt load would be potentially more precarious. So this is an X here on metric number five as they can't support their debt load on a historical basis. But on a current basis, again, things are looking pretty interesting for the business, and it does look like they'd be able to support those debts going forward if they maintain their current situation into the future. Then our sixth and final metric, the big metric of them all, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this would potentially give us a slight risk premium to the rate of the 10-year treasury yield and potentially give us another reason to be interested in Ontario resources. Currently, they have an enterprise value of about $15 billion, and we're using their enterprise value because it's taking into account both their market cap and their net debt position. So it's going to give us a more accurate economic picture of the business that's more similar to as if Ontario were a private company. We learned that over their last five fiscal years, they've only produced $150 million worth of free cash flow, meaning that in an average year, they're only producing about $30 million worth of free cash flow. So their average free cash flow to enterprise value yield is very minuscule. It's coming in at less than a fifth of 1%. So this is a big X here on metric number six. However, all hope is not lost for the business as we learned previously because over their last 12 months, they produced about $2 billion worth of free cash flow. So to get a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business, when we divide their $2 billion worth of their last 12 months of free cash flow by their $15.3 billion total enterprise value, that gives us a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield of approximately 13% that would be quite a bit above that 5% benchmark we're looking for. Again, this is already an X on metric number six, as we wanted that on a historical basis. But with such a high current free cash flow to enterprise value yield, it does look like Ontario is potentially interesting to dig into and do more research on, especially if you'd be able to find convincing evidence one way or another, whether or not these current free cash flows would be able to continue and be maintained going forward. Please keep in mind that this analysis is not financial advice. Just because this is an X here on one regard and potentially interesting on another does not mean that you're going to go run out and buy or sell this business. This type of analysis is meant to provide a holistic and beginning understanding of Ontario as a business to help you determine whether or not it's worth your time and energy to dig in and learn more about the company. Although these metrics are simple, they're holistic in nature, and when combined together, they can be very powerful. Then just a note, Ontario does not currently pay out dividends, and they have not paid out dividends over their last five years. 
Then finally, here we're using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair value for Ontario. So starting with an average of their free cash flows per share, which is well below what their current free cash flows are, but serves to give a more normalized perspective of their free cash flows. Then using historical growth assumptions based off how the business has performed over the last 10 years and using these to project their free cash flows out into the future. These are historical growth assumptions that you need to do your own homework on to determine whether or not these are going to be potentially accurate or applicable going forward as a baseline projected estimate for Ontario. If we assume that their free cash flows decline at a rate of about 8% annually over the next 10 years, and then 10% annually over the 10 years out after that, so declining over the next 20 years. And if we were looking for a 10% rate of return going forward from the business, then it looks like a potential fair value today is around $24 per share. So please keep in mind that a discounted cash flow model, just like any other model in any other discipline, is going to have its outputs be sensitive to its inputs. There are a number of reasons why these potentially would not be accurate for the business going forward. One of them being, again, that they are a commodity producer and they operate in a cyclical commodity natural gas business. Then most importantly, this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered legal and financial professionals. So in summary, Ontario checks the box on three out of six of our metrics. Even though they're earning very high returns on capital over their last 12 months, they average negative returns on capital historically. Their revenues, earnings, and free cash flows have all grown over the last five years, and they've had modest dilution at best, only diluting existing shareholders by about 4%. So they're growing on a per share basis. Then historically, their free cash flows have been pretty terrible over the last five years. However, over their last 12 months, they produced more than $2 billion worth of free cash flow. The big if for this business that you need to determine is whether or not these current free cash flows are going to be more indicative of the company's future or if they're going to regress to where they had been in the past. So if it is the case that they're able to maintain their current free cash flows, then it looks like they would be able to support their debt profile and that the company would be potentially offering us an attractive risk premium in comparison to the yield of the 10-year treasury. But again, that's the big if that you need to research. Then finally, performing a discounted cash flow analysis of Ontario using an average of their free cash flows, including their last 12 months, and projecting those out into the future based off of their historical abilities to grow those free cash flows, it looked like if you were seeking a potential 10% rate of return from the business, that a reasonable valuation for the company is around $24 per share. So down from where the business is at currently, but they were there back in March of 2022. It's worth reiterating that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with your financial advisor. One resource that will definitely help you stay up to speed with what's going on in the market and help you learn more about the business is Seeking Alpha. Checking out Seeking Alpha directly supports the channel as I'm part of their affiliate program. So most of you probably know Seeking Alpha as a source of community written articles on different stocks. But over the past little while, they've actually become a lot more than that with their new offering, which is Seeking Alpha Premium. Premium has a number of different features where you can track buy, hold, and sell ratings on your favorite stocks. These ratings are from the Seeking Alpha community, Wall Street analysts, and Seeking Alpha's algorithm. You can see earnings call transcripts, investor presentations, SEC filings, and press releases all in one place. You can add your own margin of safety targets and get alerts for when your favorite stocks hit that level. You can get unlimited access to Seeking Alpha articles, and you can tailor your rating experience based on the type of investor you are. You can get 10 years of financial data on any stock to help you with your analysis. You can also import your portfolio into your Seeking Alpha dashboard to make researching easier. And if that didn't convince you, the best thing is that an annual plan is only 99 bucks. That's only 27 cents per day through my referral link down in the description below. Normally premium is $239, but they are currently running a general offer for $119. But if you use my link, it's only 99 bucks. So check it out if you're interested. So as a value investor, you're ultimately trying to conduct your research as if you're going to own 100% of a business, and you can truly learn what the underlying essence of that business is and understand what's important and what's not important for that business going forward. So through your deeper research into Ontario, you'll be able to learn more about the qualitative and the quantitative aspects of the business, and you'll likely be able to determine for yourself what a reasonable and appropriate intrinsic value for the business will be. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Ontario Resources Corporation, ticker symbol AR. Again, we were looking at Ontario as a subscriber request today and because they're one of the top performers over the last year. They also fit in nicely with our recent theme of looking at energy businesses as they're a natural gas producer. I'm happy to make an analysis of the business. So if you learned something today or you enjoyed the video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Ontario Resources with me, and have a great day.